Welcome to Twitch Rivals Halo Infinite Showdown. Today, we'll feature 32 of the biggest creators in an 18 4v4 showdown. Two groups of four teams will play a round robin, then square off against each other in a cross bracket final. All of this for $50,000 in total prize money with $9,500 to the champions. Not only are the champs walking away with some big bucks, but they're also taking home a year's supply of Doritos. Not a bad day of gaming here on Twitch Rivals. I'm fired up. And uh, I know you guys are excited to see a lot of our top dogs in the competition. Let's take a look at some of the big names. Myth is in action here playing Halo Infinite, and he's doing it with the mouse and keyboard on set. He is indeed, and he's playing on 560 F uh, FOV by the looks of things. I've never seen a reticle so small, but when you're an MK, obviously, you can spin around so, so quickly. The man's an animal, and so is Jake and Bake Pocket. You know, every single player we're going to have today, they love Halo. They've been playing Halo. They've been grinding Halo. Yeah. Everybody's been doing it. Jake and Bake has been ferocious in previous rivals. Tanner Slays, though, could be a fan favorite in the chat today, Bravo. Yeah, I love Tanner. Uh, this guy, you know, a lot of people have seen him on few past few years on Apex, but uh, anyone who knows Tanner well enough or spent enough time in his stream knows that Tanner Slays is one of the Halo OGs, so it's awesome to have Tanner here as well. Yeah, good luck to Tanner and the rest of the squads. Let's take a look at all 32 of our players. We've broken them out into eight different teams of four, and you're going to see your captains here on our first sheet. We got Eric Cole, Autumn, CDM, the third, and Echidna. I'm looking at that CDM lineup. He's got some stacked players on his squad. Eric Cole with a pretty strong team as well, but I think it's the second group of squads that we have a feeling could be playing for the championship. Giggs is a captain. Legion's a captain. We got Sony and Zentrea. What are you liking on this screen, Mark? Who do you have eyes on? I mean, Agent Legion, right? Look at that lineup. He's been putting out the DMs straight away to get his squad together. Karma's been playing in the HCS Opens. He's yep. been dominating. You know, the man's an animal. We know all about him. Nick Merckx has been playing as well. We know that, you know, he's uh, played a lot of Halo back in the day, competed back in the MLG days as well in a tournament. And then you got Slasher as well. I mean, th that team is stacked. That team is yeah, not right. to describe it. It's, it's stacked, okay? <laughs> it's the legends of the console. The guys who have been around for about 10 years true. all in one lineup. But you got Legion to carry as well. Just kidding, Legion. Good luck in your tournament today. Mark, though, we got to call out a few of the captains here. Which captain are you looking at in this competition? I'm keeping my eye on Lady Echidna. If you're not uh, familiar with Jen and everything she does on Twitch, a very, very entertaining streamer. You can see at the top right here, the helmet might be a little bit oversized. You know, I'm just saying it's a maybe could come in a slightly smaller size for Jen. But if you don't tune into her streams, very, very entertaining. Very, very funny. Dark sense of humor as well, which is always something that stands out to me and makes me giggle. But also a shooter. And I think this uh, this clip shows it. This is the psychic. Oh, man. This is, a, this is the thing that I can't hit any bullets with. Look at this. Look at this. Easy triples. Doesn't miss bullets. Jen's an animal. She's uh, she's de definitely going to be a player to watch today, for sure. Echidna is going to be captaining her team. We have another captain, though, that Bravo is going to be looking out for. So, Bravo, tell me a little bit about the man who goes by the name of Giggs. Does he have a squad that can go the distance here? I think he does. If, if you look at those squads that we just saw, I think Team Giggs is also a pretty stacked one in terms of the way it's lined up. But a lot of you might follow Giggs from his time in Destiny. I mean, he made a pretty big name for himself, has an awesome community. Uh, a lot of that comes from, of course, the Destiny community. But you might not know that Giggs is an OG Halo dude. Take a look at the sneaky stuff, top A on the sandbags as well, getting those back smacks. But uh, Giggs, this guy knows how to play. This guy can throw down. I'm pretty sure he has Game Saker on his team as well. So, like, don't sleep on these guys. These guys are Halo crew through and through, and I'm definitely excited expecting them to get pretty late into the bracket as well. I'm looking forward to this mouse versus keyboard battle all day long. Well, gentlemen, you picked out some fantastic folks, but I want to tell you about my top five because I couldn't pick just one creator and I can't do things in any numbers other than five or ten. Here's my top five starting things <laughs> off. I got CDN the third, baby. This guy used to challenge everyone at our Halo lands in New Jersey. 1v1 me for a dollar on lockout, bro. I lost about three bucks to him, but I beat him in fight night. CDN the third, definitely going to be one of our players to watch coming in at the five spot i'm looking for him to put on some highlight reels coming in at number four i've got autumn why autumn 
Well, she's good at every FPS she plays, and she picks up the sniper rifle in the enemy base and hits this triple. That's going in my top five. The best part of this, she's not going for the over. She's going for the objective. That's what it's going to take to win tonight. Coming in at our three spot, it's Laquan. He's got a Gucci Xbox. Microsoft loves him. He's one of the biggest streamers in Halo right now. Love to see him picking up the sticks behind the Master Chief once again. And as we mentioned, he is playing with some console goats here. Here's one of them, one of the top earners in gaming today, Nick Merckx. Well, a fraction of it came from his pro days. More recently, he's been crushing it in games like Warzone. You saw him on Fortnite, but he's an OG. When he wasn't on Gears of War, this man was grinding out Halo ranked. He's going for the 50 day. And your number one spot, it's got to be Shazam. Why Shazam? One of the greatest in-game leaders of all time. From Counter-Strike to Valorant, I got good news for you, Shazam. There's nobody but NA players in this tournament, so you're safe with us here on Twitch Rivals. On set, what do you think of my top five? Did I get the order right? Uh, I think the fact we got a pocket top five is never a bad thing, right? We get that energy, we get the vibes, and, and like you're saying, you could list probably every single player. It's almost like top five wasn't enough, to be honest with you. I could listen to a top 20 with the amount of amazing players that we have in here. So, uh, yeah, I'm just excited to get these games going. It's going to be so much fun. I'm pretty pumped. To be honest, uh, I'm ready to make another top five clips and put them out on Twitter. Keep your eyes out for that. In the meantime, though, we got to talk a little bit about some of the top players, and we have two of them joining us right now. We got CDN the third in a kid note. Welcome to the show. Let's start here with Big Daddy C's. It's been a minute, brother, since we were playing for a dollar on lockout. How you been? Oh, my God, dude. It's a blast from the past, <laughs> man. What's going on, boys? What up, man? We are pumped. I'm good. I'm today. chilling. So playing some Halo. We're so, ready. I was going to say, tell me a little bit about your squad. Did you guys get any games in before the tournament? How we feeling? Yes, we've been playing in Magnet Land. I I'm sorry, I meant uh, crossplay. And uh, we've been getting some good reps. We've been definitely getting some good reps in. It's me, my boy Requiem Slaps, my OG Gears brethren from like uh -huh. 16 years ago. We got Tanner Slays, the Apex legend. And then we got another Shazam, okay? So there's like two different Shazams. I don't know if you guys know, but we got the other Shazam. You know, the better Shazam, but you know what I mean? We're not playing Valorant, so we'll see what's going to go on. I like this. I like this a lot. Looking forward to seeing your team. Akinnavo, you are coming in with a lineup of of your own did you bring the purple helmet today uh it's behind me somewhere yeah <laughs> but uh we're all halo kids so i'm looking forward to this it's uh say, me Jen, chilled people... you oh sorry go on no 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 you i was just gonna ask about your roster we're, we're looking forward to seeing you guys play but go over your roster yeah oh uh it's so it's me obviously uh chilled you uh king j and nsg serial so we're all halo kids so i got you know i got high hopes for us Nice, nice. I was gonna We're say, all on controller, I was, so. <laughs> I was going to say, I think you guys, I think some people might be sleeping on Team Echidna. I think this roster is going to slap a bit today. Have you got anyone in the bracket, Jen, that you're looking to take down, by the way? Because there's a few big names in there. Is there anyone you want to, like, knock out early on? You want to, you know, get the dub early? We play for a C's. I mean, I think we got, like, a good... I think we can take him out, you know. I heard him talking in his stream about bagging, so I might throw a couple out there. <laughs> you know? Hey, 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 you kidding me, Echidna? You kidding me? <laughs> so you got so wait, so you got four somehow. controllers on your team. You got you got four rollers on your team, uh, Echidna? Yeah, are you scared? No, no, no. We're just gonna put you guys back on the refrigerator. It's no big okay. deal. We'll see, we'll see, man. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> A little friendly rivalry brewing here on Twitch Rivals. Yeah. CDN, Akidma, thank you so much for joining the show. I am pumped to have you guys playing in front of all of us here to kick off Halo Infinite. You're watching Twitch Rivals Halo Infinite Showdown. Support your team in chat and watch them gain the lead. Round one, next. It is so sick that we have the voice of Halo joining us throughout this entire Halo Infinite showdown. What's up, everybody? It is Puckett. I am back. We got 32 players playing for $50,000. You just broke down the format. Before we get into today's action, I want to give you a chance to win big. It's time for Guessing with Duncan, where you have a chance to win a new Twitch Rivals Duncan chair pillow by predicting outcomes in today's first game. 
So check out the polling widget. It's right over here. There we go. In the Twitch Rivals extension, make your predictions. Watch your name shoot to the top of the leaderboard. Be sure to keep your eyes out on the extension for new predictions throughout the game. No purchase necessary. It's open in all 50 states and D.C. If you're 18 and older, see official rules. Link.twitch.com. There you go, guys. Twitch Rivals. Duncan is the place to go for all the rules, but it's time to take a look here at our opening round matchups. Reminder, this is group play. We're playing round robin. Everybody is going to play everybody, and we got some bangers here in our first round of action. Let's take a look at how it's all going to work. Autumn's taking on Air Cool, CDN versus Echidna. That's a big one that we just talked to both captains about. They are fired up for this opener. And as you can see, our group will play everyone here as the day continues. Over in Group B, you're going to see another round one matchup. And this is going to be an interesting start to the day for squads like Giggs and Legion. They're going toe-to-toe -to, -toe to open things up. Into the pot, we've got Centrea. Fellas, enough talking from me. Our matches are ready. Let's kick off this, baby. It's round robin, round number one. Round one begins with capture the flag on Aquarius. Then it's open season in the bazaar in game two with Slayer. <laughs> Sorry, Mark. Move over. We got Jeff right. Spencer on this show. Right so. Right so. Right Have so. it. Rightly so. I mean, that man, he can cast all day. I'll just sit back and listen to that voice. You know, I've listened to it for 20 plus years almost now, and I'm quite happy to listen to that voice every day. Probably one of the coolest things that happened to me this year, Sundance paid Jeff to record my announcement of my baby. Uh, so wow. shout out wow. to that guy. He's here on the show. I'm super pumped for this. I mean, I'm getting all the greatest Halo vibes. How are you feeling coming to this first round, Bravo? Uh, dude, I'm so excited. I mean, we have a stacked lineup. I think we talked about it at the opening of the show, but for anyone who's just, just joining, I know we have a lot of people just tuning in. This is a stacked Twitch Rivals. Now, we've all done a few of these at this point across a few different games. Man, in terms of talent and, like, size of awesome communities and everything, this one is stacked. This is a pretty big Rivals. Um, and what's cool is we got a lot of Halo uh, true and true OGs, and we also have a lot of people that have broken out into, into other games that are also OGs that people might be sleeping on, right? Nick Burke, CDN, these guys grew up on Halo. So... I'm pretty stoked to get into these games. There's gonna, there's a lot of like good OG Halo blood running through the veins of these players, and I think it's gonna be on display today. Well, here we have it. Our first map is loading up. We're going in to capture the flag. Onset, I'll let you take this one away as we kick off the first game in today's action. Well, here we go. A little bit of a full start before, but now we're ready to get into the games, Andy. What a way to start things off, right? We love a bit of uh, classic arena Halo, and uh, Aquarius is where, gonna be, where we're going to be starting. This is pretty much as classic Halo as you could possibly ask for here in Halo Infinite. Two bases, top middle to control. You can see the heat wave, all of the weapons we need to know about. These teams just can be battling out. Playing to five flags, of course. And first person to cap five will win, or when that time expires, the team who has the most flags will, of course, take things home. Now... What do you love about this map, Andy? Because we played a lot of Halo together since Halo Infinite has come out. What, what really stands out to you? You know, I, I we have played a lot of Halo Infinite. It's been fantastic, and a lot of the players here in today's tournament have as well. I think my favorite thing about this map is that, like you said, it really is your tried and true two base, two tower CTF match. As we take a look here at Echidna's lobby, waiting to get in. The team is all ready uh, to rock. We'll wait for this one to start. But if you're just uh, joining us here at Twitch Rivals and you haven't seen much Halo Infinite, which, first of all, is a surprise, because if you're a fan of these players, they've all been gaming quite a bit of Halo Infinite. But don't worry, throughout the day, we'll guide you through the game types, the rules, everything to expect in these games. But one thing is for sure, Mark. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, oh, it certainly is. We're going to have a blast. Yesterday. I mean, I've already got a permanent yeah, smile on my face so far today. And as you can see, we're just looking at a lobby. We haven't even got into the gameplay yet, but it does give us a chance to just look at the teams a little bit here. And we can talk about Team Echidna because she's saying, you know, she picked up three controller players. Yep. Pretty smart thing to do. And uh, I want to talk about uh, King J a little bit here because King J mm -hmm. is an amazing Halo player. We saw him scrimming against Sentinels the other day. I mean, if you get into a scrim with Sentinels, it, you know, it says all you need to know about the talent of King J. He is a very, very talented man. Oh, for sure. And I think one thing that's interesting is, right, a lot of these players that we said have been streaming Halo Infinite, they've been playing it, and they might have even had a little bit of competition experience back in the day. However, let's not forget, the Echidnas and the King Jays of the world, they know exactly how to play this game. There's a lot of hard rules about how to play each game type, right? I mean, it's already being figured out and a lot of nuance already to the meta of Halo Infinite. So you got to think the Halo players that have been gaming hard for these past few weeks, they're going to have a little bit of an edge, especially on CTF Aquarius. 
Yeah, you would yeah, imagine so. Up. However, yeah, as we know in Twitch I'm, Rivals, I'm sometimes a little bit of carnage is what no, we want to see, right? Yeah. And that's no, what we off, usually do end up seeing. But something that certainly has to be controlled on this map, Andy. Classic Halo, right? Control those power-ups. That camo top mid is going to be vital for teams to succeed. It absolutely is. And here we are. We're jumping right into the gameplay right away. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Twitch Rivals, the Halo Infinite Showdown. Bravo alongside Onset. So excited to be bringing you all of the action today. It is going to be a jam-packed day full of fantastic games and some of your favorite Twitch creators here and like Mark said, it's going to all be about he's, the power he's, weapons he's on, he and the power-ups here. So early camo grab coming in yeah. for Team Echidna. Yeah, yeah unfortunately for Team uh, CDN there, that was uh, three dead. And now you can see oh, we're going to be oh, watching oh, some okay. POVs yeah, of some of the players. And remember, every honestly, single player who is uh, playing right today right, yeah. is going to be streaming. So make sure to go and check out their streams, do all of that good stuff and uh, support these content creators and players for uh, doing what they do best. But look at, look at this, Andy, already. Echidna's got this flag back into a closet. This could be the first flag inside the first minute or so of the Ooh. game. This is a, this is a Hurricane of a star. It is. Look at that. First cap goes in for Echidna and even gets a melee in the back of the base. Going to be happy about that. An important melee because you saw the team was able to clean that up right away. But like you said, Team Echidna striking early. That's what we expected to see from this squad. And uh, just like Mark said, make sure to give all these players a lot of love today. Make sure to give them a quick follow. It only takes a second to support them for everything that they do and all the hard work they put in. Double kill, though, comes in for King J. Will he turn three? Ooh, almost gets the over. It's a killing speed triple kill for King J. Onset, you were talking about him for a reason. Yeah, the man's uh, he's very good at Halo, and you've just seen a pretty good example of it there. Triple kill, and just unfortunately didn't quite have the shields to really challenge, but I respect the fact that he did challenge, Andy, because if there's anything you need to know about a good Halo player, it's when you get the triple, it doesn't matter how many shields left. You've got to challenge. you got to go for the over. You've got to go for that clip. It is. There's one thing that Elamite taught me years ago. I was playing Rumble Pit back in the Halo 3 days, and he just said, oh, you always fly out. You always go for the no-scope. It doesn't matter. doesn't matter what's going on in the game. You go for that over, and King J, like a true Halo legend went for the over as well but nice little lead here early on for team echidna like we said they're up one to zero over cdn but also let's not forget cdn and crew they know how to play this game as well yeah maybe they're gonna grow into this a little bit you can see the things have slowed down ever so slightly it's a little bit of a fight for mid map control which is what a lot of aquarius capture the flag ends up being until you get those slays until you can get inside of the base but you see at the moment it's just a death screen for echidna which means that team cdn is starting to feel their way back into things here picking up a few slays along the way yeah, now we'll take a look here. It's also Requiem Slaps, like we said, alongside Tenor Slays, Shazam, and CDM. Sidekick play coming in. Nice sidekick play, and that's one thing, Mark. Whether you're in the utility, especially if you're on mouse and keyboard, you can slap with that sidekick. No, you certainly can. You've just seen a prime example of it. It's almost like they painted the picture for us. And with the camouflage as well, it's starting to make things interesting. But there's a grenade that's going to tickle away at the armor and be a little bit uncomfortable. King J picks up a kill in the base. So a couple of kills going down either side. King J surviving for now. But you can see in the feed, a couple of kills being picked up. And that flag is moving. And it's 1-1 one -one at the moment. Big plays coming in. Oh, my word. He said that he didn't get triple kill earlier. There's your overkill. King J picks up all four. That's going to be a flag return. Oh boy, and as, as you saw it in the feed, it happened off screen, and it certainly happened on screen, though, if you're watching King J's feed. Uh, fantastic work there, uh, able to pick up another one and not done yet. Here's Shield U as well, picking up a kill on Tanner. And Utility just landed down, and you could even hear it in the comms on set. They're talking about all the small talk, right? I'm going P1, I'm watching this. Right now, they are putting on a clinic and doing pretty well in our game number one. Yeah, we're not talking about a Blink-182 song as well. All the small talk is certainly something that is uh, very, very popular and very, very uh, vital at the top level of Halo. And if you've got that in a team and you pick up teammates, Andy, especially in like the first few minutes, you know it's going to bode well, especially when you get a few reps under your belt and you get a few maps under your belt. But can we just get, take a second as we see this flag going in, this second flag going in, 2-0 now to Team Echidna. We've seen King J in the kill feed, I think, twice so far. And it's been a triple and an overkill. There's got to be a kill tag coming. Uh, that's how I was going to say, things, right? It's, it's the natural progression of things. I was going to say the same thing. The man is setting a precedent here, and uh, soon we might see him with even more on the board. But it's going to be Serial and Echidna both picking up kills there to pick up a few more kills. And we got to give a shout out. We've been talking about Echidna and Jay a lot, but we got to talk about also Chilled You and Serial also doing a lot of work here in this game to make sure that their team has been performing. And uh, once again, we're seeing that flag move through the gen. This is the best way to run this flag that's been kind of uh, worked out by some of the best players in the world over the last couple of weeks since Infinite has launched. Get it through that closet, get it through bottom lightning, and then 
going to end your play. You have so much cover, and you can just see yeah, how easy that was for a, for a Kidna to run that one back. Perfect cover from her teammates. Nice shots coming in from Kidna as well. Can't quite hit the headshot, but backs down smartly. Look, there's Ciro to finish things off. You know what I like there from Echidna, and we talk about this a lot during HCS, Mark, is Echidna right there, like, really wise to just avoid anything around melee range. Do you see how she even had, like, three shots up, but just didn't go up top, didn't get naded, didn't get melee? I mean, that's a, that takes a lot of discipline to understand those situations in Halo Infinite, and, and just putting yourself in a position where you're not likely to take damage has really been a difference maker, and they are making this look way too easy. They're running what could be their fourth flag. Yeah, King J putting the kills to the side for just a moment and deciding that the flag is what he needs to focus on. The flag has been pulled, though, so the return is going to have to be picked up before they can put this one home. You do have to have your flag at home to score. It looks like they will there get the goes, return. Yes. That's going to be another flag. And now it's just one flag for Team Echidna to go up by one. Uh, I was going to say, this is going to be a very quick one by the looks of it here. We're not even halfway through Absolute this game. Cars, uh, and some good shots from both sides. It looks like cars, uh, King J not done. Surprised that that one didn't go in. And it will be Shazam that wins uh, that one. But now back over here to chill to you as they're looking, like you said, up 4-0. to zero. Yeah, Tana's running this flag, though. If you can get around this corner, there might be an opportunity maybe to get a flag on the board, but they do need a few kills. As now we're going to see Chilju trying to get the flank. He's picking up some kills. That's three dead, and the flag is down. So good. Uh, a little bit of patience there coming in on those kills from Team Echidna. Not overextending, making sure they're getting to good positions to pick up the kills. And when you do that, you've always got that option for a counter cap. Absolutely. And now they're going to run the textbook. They're going to run the playbook as they go up top, and they're going to watch everything that's going to be top planners. They're already running through utility, and they're looking to score that final flag. It's going to be our flag, I think. Jazz picks up one. And that's going to clear the way. Two picked up. Last player alive is maybe going to go for a little bit of a desperate hero play inside of the base. But look at this communication. It's beautiful. The teamwork is on point. And that means five flags on the board. And that means one new in the series to Team Echidna. Hoo, hoo, hoo. And you hear in their comms, they're pretty excited about that one. Lots to feel good about there. Smiles on the face of Echidna as well. That's just another, it's just another day on the it's job for day. Echidna and company. Easy stuff for them. Easy stuff Easy. for them. I mean, if you watch it, if you, if you watch these guys' streams and these girls' streams, you'll know that you go into matchmaking, they're just winning. It's just dubs on dubs and dubs, Andy. It's just dubs on dubs on dubs. Speaking of dubs, something that maybe Legion isn't, uh, you know, completely synonymous with. Uh, I love Legion, by the way. He's, uh, he's a very, very funny man, and uh, I know him very, very well. We're going to jump over to this game, Team Legion versus Team Kings. I get the feeling that, you know, this is one where some of the players involved down. You might hold this over each other if they get that win. I was going to say, there's a lot more than just these games on the line. There's a lot more than just the bracket play. By the way, this is Team Gigs versus Team Legion. We'll give you a quick rundown of these teams as we go, but just as we jump into this match, of course, we're watching Nick Merckx right now. On Nick Merckx's side, it's going to be Team Legion. Also got Karma and Slasher out, so it's an amazing lineup there. Going up against Giggs, Game Sager, Hotshot Ghost, and Twisted Mind. So, like we said, these are probably two of the most stacked rosters in the tournament as well. The flag's going to be moving through bottom middle in the moment, and it's uh, Team Giggs, who look like they're uh, in position to maybe cap this flag. He throws it up to the front of the base. Very, very smart stuff coming in here from Giggs, and there is that Flag being put in a team game. I'm going to say it, Andy. Straight up. Surprises me to see them three in a row with five minutes left in the game. Yeah, absolutely, right there. Like we said, uh, certainly a team to watch uh, in this one. And now just going to see what can happen on the other side as well. We'll take a look at Game Saker, another Halo OG. You might have watched the streams over the years not knowing just how much Halo these guys have played, but they have been playing and part of the community in a long, for a long time and in big ways. Some nice shots coming in there on Karma as well as Legion. Like you said, three to zero right now. This is another crazy, uh, crazy like talented two? player. Where's he going? In the Halo community, he plays in the Halo Championship Series oh, quite a bit. So uh, he'll know how to uh, get those flags moving as he's got a 1v1 with yeah, Nick Merckx. And Nick Merckx didn't have a chance because he didn't even know he was getting really shot. The fourth shot was perfect. Unfortunately, he gets he's traded out. Around, and now we're going back to right battle for the middle of the map. Who can get it? Who can get control? And then try and get those kills on their way towards the base. Yeah, let's not forget. I mean, this, you know, Nick Merckx, Karma, you got big names on the other side of the stage. But like I said, Team Giggs, between Giggs and Game these guys are Halo grinders. You don't understand. These guys worked so hard to build names for themselves in this scene and, and, and really you know, it, it, it took years for them to, to establish the names that they have but now they are not only so well known in Halo but also so well known across the other communities that they participate in as well. So these guys came ready to play for sure. Karma's going to pick one up. Legion decides that he's going to leave the flag top middle. 
Let's go back mines into the gen. Doesn't get the kill on mines though. And a little bit questionable, I would say maybe from Legion. Maybe not just trying to force that flag home, but we'll have to see how this one does turn out. It will go in, so even though I'm questioning the play, it will work out in the end, Andy. There's different ways to do things in Halo Infinite. And that is going to be the first flag on the board. So now we've got a game on. Two flags between the two teams with three minutes and 27 seconds left. Yeah, I know. As we said, just in case those of you just joining us, Nick Merckx, a player you might know from a few different games, but let's not forget during his Gears days, also a huge Halo guy, a uh, really talented player across so many shooters as well as he picks up one there, tries to get a second as well from the side of Giggs as we're taking a look uh, at Twisted Minds and now also going to go for a flag grab as well. Minds is running this one towards Lightning again. This is a run you're going to see a lot today if we see in multiple games of Aquarius Flag. You get the cover that you need. You can see there's going to be a trade coming out. The Cole with a big double kill here is going to slow things down for just a few seconds. Absolutely now. You hear a little bit of comms there. Trying to figure out if they're going to be able to grab this one bottom dynamos or if there's going to be maybe too much pressure. One shot. Absolute. Legion in a 1v1. Ooh, he's going to die to that grenade, though, as Giggs will uh, roll that one lovingly down the stairs towards his feet, and uh, Legion will accept. Carmel with some nice shots, and he's going to almost pick up the double. Doesn't get the bleed down, though, unfortunately for him. As you can see, two players on top of that glass tower, that side of the map that is so vital to control as well to get those cross map shots in. By the way, I gotta say, this is just so much fun. A huge shout out to, to all these players that are playing, uh, you know, both you and Puckett as well, to have this kind of crew together for the first Halo Infinite Rivals. This is amazing. So also just shout out to everyone in chat just hanging out with us today. It's gonna be an amazing day of Halo Infinite from so many top creators across Twitch and Halo Legends, to be honest. It's gonna be a really fun day. I'm locked in. I don't know about you, but like, I'm already like, full, uh, my head is closer to the camera right now. Nick Burks's, okay? That's what I'm gonna say. I think there's probably the same amount of sweat coming out of our bodies as well. But this is, uh, this is one minute and 50 odd seconds left in this game. And Team Legion down by two, they gotta get those kills going, Andy. They gotta get those flags moving. Otherwise, they're just going to run out of time. Oh, yeah, Absolutely. As we take a look at some heat wave action coming in from the side of mines, we'll see what he's going to be able to do. Exchanging some shots. And he has the Legion is getting pushed from two one, angles, one, though. He take care. Yeah, this is now known as the meat wave because it just barbecues people. Those lasers, I tell you what, they're pretty, pretty hot. I'm not exactly sure what the projectiles are that come out of it, but I'm going to pretend that there's some sort of barbecue sauce and it's teriyaki or something like that. I'm not sure. I'm not 100% on it. I'm have to look into the law, but maybe we can get him the experience onto that one. Some shots now going on to Karma, who will be taking down those shields. A lovely little back smack coming in there, sneaky, sneaker than uh, snake and slippers, I'll say about that one, as we see another battle going down on the lightning, but time is starting to be against uh, Team Legion here, they've got a minute left, they've got to go forward here, Andy. Yeah, not much time at all, also got an update from Pucket yeah, here from production, also just letting us know that Hotshot Ghost is actually number 12 ranked overall for crossplay ranked, so don't sleep on Hotshot Ghost either, it's a reason that they're up by such a lead here. Some Legion POV then. Trying to move across I mean, bottom middle. The flag is being pulled though by Team Gig. So Legion's got to go big. Legion's got to go huge. I'm working with his teammates. He's going to be able to get a touch of that flag as well. The lightning grenades will go down. Those dynamos that just deny people from running through. Do so much damage. Get so much information. And now with 30 seconds left, this might be the flag they need to bring it to within one. They do so. 30 seconds left is the miracle about to happen. I think we're going to start calling those dynamos those deniamos because, like you said, able to deny so much air. Area there, and they're going to try to pull this last flag. They've only got 18 seconds, but they could run this and hit overtime. Yeah, this could be overtime. They get the flag moving. Karma's making the move through closet. They need kills, though. Mines is there, and Mines picks up. Oh, dude, Daddy Karma! He picks up two as well. That was all dead, and with just a few seconds left on the clock, sudden death is up. They got that flag out at least, but Karma taken down by the respawners. They need to get there right now. Nick Merckx flies in for the touch. It looks like that's going to tick down. I think it's going to be uh, e return, and that should be it. Started bringing it back though at the end. Yeah, that is going to be really it. Ice. Nick like, Merck's devastated. Like, <laughs> you can see it. The competitive spirit will yeah. never leave that man's body. Yeah, they're second. Cap. Like, the guy was one shot. Front of him. Gigs, uh, to have gone you know, through. But... Going to be pretty happy, I think. You can hear yeah, this dude. He's sounded pretty calm yeah, about yeah. things, considering how carnage filled those last few moments were. Yeah, I gotta say, by the way, big shout out to Team Legion. Uh, we're gonna go over to back to the CDN and Kid in the match, but I wanna just say before we get dive into this one in the details, big shout out to Team Legion there because Karma, Nick Merckx, and Slash Rao, they were able to put a lot of uh, flags on the board late game, and to be honest, like we said, they're up against the stacked roster as well, so I'm looking forward to seeing how that series goes, but now we're back into our game number two with CDN and Echidna.
We are indeed, and this is a bizarre slayer. So first to 50 kills is what's going to win you this game, and plenty of weapons, Ooh. like we know, in Halo Infinite to use. But what you got to use if you see an overshield player? Here's that plasma pistol. You got to hit those shots. You got to rip those shields say, off. That, but unfortunately, it's not going to happen. Andy. Did that green gun miss? I've never seen a green gun miss from that. I, I was. I'm not even going to blame that map. I'm not going to blame that on the player. I'm really surprised that that plasma pistol did not hit. As as many of you uh, Halo veterans in the chat will know, that green gun will rip that overshield right off but surprisingly from that distance it actually did not connect but now as you take a look at the score here already seven to five in favor of echidna but pretty even start off the break um, i was just going to say there i think echidna's webcam might have frozen for a second or she was playing in one of the most unorthodox play positions i've ever seen in my life which was kind of not even holding the controller but if you're talented you're talented right and if you can uh, get kills without holding the controller then more power to you but looking at the score right now it's 10 to 7 make that 11 as we go over to some tanner slays pov and uh, it looks at the moment like there's a lot of pressure on their base. They're just kind of caught down at the bottom of the rockets. This is not the place you want to be, Andy. No, it's not. And I have to guess, I'm not sure what the... I, I think all of uh, Team CDN is on. It's going to be mouse and keyboard, if I'm not mistaken. So this is going to be a full mouse and keyboard versus controller battle uh, in this series as we go back on board with the kid. Now, just check out top bar, trying to see what she might find, and she finds someone bottom rocks. A couple of grenades going to go in as well. Ooh, I'm not quite sure what happened there. It was a little bit of a... Thing around the Rosie, and it's not going to work out in her favor. Unfortunately, she does get taken down by uh, by Tanner. So Tanner, uh, we moved away from him for a few seconds, and he picks up some kills. Hey, that's what happens sometimes, right? But this gun, Andy, talk to me about this gun, the Mangler. In my opinion, the strongest utility weapon in the game at the moment. Yeah, those of you who haven't played too much Halo Infinite, or maybe you've only played a few games here and there, the Mangler absolutely shreds so much so that it is maybe one of the most talked about, if not the most talked about. Some good shots coming in from Serial there. Pick up that kill, but. Uh, one All of right, the most talked about weapons in professional play and the highly contested on topics, the, certainly. Uh, the Mangler the is Geiger. able to do all sorts of damage on set, and honestly, so is the Bulldog. It certainly is. The Bulldog going to be uh, pretty scary up close. It one certainly one has a bark on it, and it's certainly going to do some damage. But look at the score here, 19 to 9. Starting to get a little bit out of hand here, to be honest with you, Andy. Uh, Team CDN on the back foot ever so slightly, and the weapons just being controlled by King J. There's so many things to control right here on Bazaar Slay. You can see the rockets are about to pop in four seconds as well. There's Bulldogs there's Maulers, there's Overshield. And to win this game, you control the middle of the map and you control all of it. And also this grapple, this could be a, this could be a highlight play coming in right now. King J, yeah. Ooh, here boy, here it comes. It's going to fly right in. Nice little grapple up to bar to maintain control. They're going to fly in. Maybe some more grapple action. Here it comes. Just going full Spider-Man across the map and able to clear out this base. But his team has done such a good job that there's no one left for the pickings on set. Yeah, this is a little bit unfortunate, to be honest with you. I was hoping that we might be able to, uh, to see something pretty fancy. Maybe maybe this time. He's got one more grapple left. Here we go. Here we go. Send it. Sends it. Gets one. Can he pick up the second as well? No, he's going to miss the beat down. But look at the cover fire coming in from teammates. He does get the trade in the end, though. And uh, that's going to be uh, another couple of kills going to Team Echidna. 28 to 11. 28 to 11, Andy. This is, uh, this is looking scary. However, as we've seen in the Halo Championship Series, comebacks here on Bazaar happen very, very quickly. Ooh. Tender Slaves with a nice kill in Bar and Tanner getting a little fancy, just uh, giving the body an extra whack as well. Might be down 13 to 13, but not down too much. I hear you. He has mangler, he has One thing that happens in, in Halo sometimes, you have to check the body's dead. We have had some uh, zombie episodes where I think we rise from the dead. Turn around, so, you know, it's just like some body disrespect. Uh, we'll talk about what's going on. Hey, guys, he's more shot than you. He's going to be picking up a kill in the kill feed. 32 to 14, the score. So doubling up almost, well, pretty much exactly on the scores at the moment for Team Echidna, and they're going to have to do something pretty silly to throw this one away. But it is best to fight, Andy. You must remember this as well. This isn't going to be over. There's three more maps to go, so maybe even if they don't manage to take this home, Team CDM will have the opportunity to maybe think about a little cheeky reverse sweep, the ultimate revenge tour. Ooh. Speaking of the Mangler, week, let's see what Shazam could do. Able to pick up one there, but Echidna actually wins that battle down bottom rockets. A whole lot of things going on in bar right there, including a Dynamo Grenade that's doing oh, that's all nice. sorts of damage. But like you said, 1636 at this point. And it's a little bit of deja vu there. People keep pushing Tanner in the bar. He almost does it again, but finally he will be taken down. Yeah, I thought for a second there that was a replay, but it, it yeah. was not a replay because it had a different result. But now we're going to uh, jump back over to, to watch 
a little bit of uh, Requiem and see what's uh, what's going on here. See if he can uh, work together with his teammates and maybe just pick up a couple of kills without response. But when you're seeing the kill feed, Andy, it's always the first kill going to Team Echidna here. And uh, you can just see it's starting to get a little bit out of hand once again as we see Chiljiu now using that grapple once again to traverse across the map like a, like a trapeze artist. It's almost graceful in the way that he's doing it. It really is graceful. It's like a gazelle. And, and one thing we got to talk about is not only is that grapple so pivotal to be able to grab power weapons and power ups and things like that, but as you can see, it lets you save so much time and take these unorthodox routes and, and really just get into your opponent's windmill. Oh boy, we've all been there. Bit of a windmill there, and Tanner's going to come out on top of that battle. Yeah, nice and breezy, unfortunately. Tanner does not miss shots in those kind of conditions, though. He should not have won that battle. But that's the kind of player he is. You can't give him any kind of leeway, any kind of opportunity, because Tana will make you pay, and it's going to be cash up Blue front. Tree, Blue tree. Blue tree. Absolutely, that's the case. Rock's about to pop, but not many kills to go here. 48 mark for the side of Echidna. A couple of rockets as well, so power weapons being controlled. Echidna on the charge, takes a little bit of damage, and the rockets will go down. The aggression not paying off this time and not getting rid of any of those rockets either. However, her teammates do pick up a couple of kills, and that is going to be good for them by the looks of things, but... It's uh, it's it's it's, it's looking up. interesting. Getting, like, I tell you what is pretty difficult, Andy. Straight up right now. You know we're swapping, 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 swapping between the uh, between the streams. The different color outlines that the players like. You meet me, jump over, and you're like, wait, who am I watching? And then you're like, oh, okay. Side right Your brain kind of clicks OS. back into gear. Yeah. We'll, we'll forget yeah, about that for now. We'll move back on to uh, some of our other games that are going on right now. Team Echo versus nice. Team Autumn. Yeah, I want to go over these rosters for everyone at home. Team Echo is going to be 72 hours, Funk Bomb, and Myth. And Team Autumn on the other side, Seridus, Jake and Bake Live, and also Laxing. So we'll have to see who's going to be able to close it out. It's 1 0 in favor of Aircool. So once again, that's 72 hours, Funk, and Myth. This is going to be Autumn. We saw uh, one of the plays from her. She's inside of uh, Puckett's top five, by the way. She was, just, yes. Uh, just a highlight, and quite rightly so. That was a disgusting play, that triple kill, the no scope. And then, like Puckett, by the way, quite rightly pointed out, a good teammate. Got the nasty triple, didn't look for the over, went for the flag. And those kind of plays are what win the games, Andy. Absolutely, Myth gets taken down there. Saratus with a nice job looking up top, and Autumn with some great damage on top rocks as well before she was taken down as we go ahead and to take a look once again over at Team Air Cool on the bar. So a little bit of a closer game here, but still quite a margin. 37-28, Mark. All there, they're all nice there, shots all coming all in. All three I've players being called out as well. Great communication coming in here from Team Air Cool. One more, one more. All of them yeah, taking damage, but none of the kills yeah, being picked up quite as yet. A little bit of a trade coming in, and you have to say that maybe there's an opportunity to clean these ones up here for air call. Does manage to get one. Teammate managed to pick up another. Some shots coming across from the bar by the looks of things. So he's just going to have to retreat here, wait for teammates. A lot of the way he's playing this one. Nice, cool, composed. Now he's got a cheeky flank on the pillars. Yeah, right now, good good lead here. So they really just need to continue playing this game the exact way they have been. I think right now with a cushion like a 10 kill, 43, 33, really they could just play this one out, play this overshield. There is that overshield. It's going to be popped up and it's going to be popped as well. One thing in Halo Infinite, a little bit different to previous Halos, Andy. The uh, When you pick up those power-ups, you have the option to hold it until you need it and engage those power-ups when you do want to use them. But when you're in a little bit of a trouble, sticky situation sometimes, still the best idea to get them used as quickly as possible just in case you get taken down. You don't want to turn them over to your opponents. Yeah, a little bit of risk-reward scenario there for anyone who's been playing previous Halo titles, but not this one, deciding when to pop that and tries to win a battle. In the end, they will trade there. So I believe just one more kill to go for the squad. Red pillars. One more kill to go. One more kill will be picked up. And it'll be Team Air Call with the win. They'll go up 2-0 to zero in the series. So they're only one map away now from closing things out. So a similar pattern across uh, across the games we're seeing and the we series like we're seeing that. so we far. Really like that. Absolutely picks up another one and they're going to be happy. And you can just see also in the comms that they're pretty happy. 15 and 7. Some good numbers like coming in there from Air Cool. We and they're going to be happy with that one. Two to zero, and they're going to be looking ahead to their next like match. But guess us. what? We are jumping right back into yeah. our CDN Echidna series. As a reminder, it is two to zero in favor of Echidna. But game number three is going to be Strongholds on Streets. Yeah, exactly. Strongholds on they're Streets as well. One of the fastest paced game types that you're going to see in the Halo Championship series. Just to point out, these are all game types that will be played in and available to everyone at home in the Ranked Arena playlist. But also, these are the game types that are played at the competitive level as well. So a beautiful bit of cross 
crossover that you're going to see here for these players with the playlist, with all the pros playing it. You know, everyone's going to be used to these game types. It's not like it's new for everyone. They've been around for, I was going to say a while now, but then I forget that Halo Infinite just came out pretty much yesterday still. It's, it's still so fresh in the memory. I think that shows how much we've been playing, Andy, to be honest. It's with you. true. Yeah, the game's been out like 28 days or something like that. It's pretty wild. But uh, speaking of the ranked playlist and being able to get to know these maps and modes, uh, Halo Infinite is free to play. It's the first Halo title that's ever been free to play. So make sure if you're watching here and you uh, are looking for some games to play this holiday and for some crazy, insane, unreasonable reason, King J also getting spicy with the, the body wax. If for some crazy reason you haven't played this game yet, make sure to jump on, whether you're uh, playing through, uh, you know, playing through Xbox, playing through Steam, this game is free to play. Make sure to jump on and you can jump into all of multiplayer for free, which is amazing to say as two 20 year veterans of this franchise that this game is free to play. Make sure you jump in this holiday. It's been uh, it's been a damn good time. Completely agree with you. We welcome you with open arms to the Halo community. Two there, two there. But uh, a 19 to 11, Team CDN are not being uh, welcomed with what open arms at the moment by uh, Team Echidna. As we're going to see, Serial pick it up a double kill in the feed. King Jay's going to thrust into a pillar. Now, Andy, we're going to have to slow down and break that one down. What do you think went wrong there with that thrust? Uh, I think, uh, yeah, you heard a little bit of comments there saying my movement is terrible. They're just a little bit of getting stuck inside of um, the B stairs. But to be honest, uh, we should also mention Halo Infinite's thrust is a little bit different, right? It has a lot of acceleration off of the actual press of the thrust button. And then thereafter, tries to make something happen there, King J around the corner. But uh, unfortunately, runs into three different players. And Tanner and crew are going to try to push in. But there's an example of a good thrust. They're going to trade out really quickly. But Tanner's going to try to something happen. He's got double-dated, bro. That was incredible. Two there, two yeah. there, two there. Red 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 thrust just a little yeah. bit different Halo Infinite. It has a lot of acceleration off of the brake, but then really slows down quite heavily. Well, B and C are being controlled right now by Team Echidna, so they're going to be scoring. You can see it at the bottom. You have to control two of those strongholds and not have them contested to B scoring. If you control all three, you're going to score a little bit quicker as well. So if you get that triple cap, it is pretty devastating to try and get out of if you've got a good team with good communication. And that's something that our Team Echidna have been doing pretty well so far. The communication has been impressive, Andy. Yeah, taking a look here at Shazam. And crew as they're trying to get some kills here. He stairs is a nice job on library. Excuse me, on, I don't know why I call it library tires. We got Halo 2 callouts coming into my brain. Uh, a nice kill on tires and back stairs, but now once again back over to Team CDN and Requiem is going to try to pick up some kills. Tries to trade, but will not get that trade on J just yet. A B. I'm the control of Team Echidna for now, so they will be scoring once more. 72 to 18, we put up to 250 points in, in strongholds. And you can see them backing up a little bit. It's a nice push coming in from uh, Team CDN, though. A couple of kills going in their favor, but it looks like the reset might be able to come in. No, there's actually going to be a player who slides into the action. A 1v1 inside of the stronghold will be traded out, but it will be B now turned over. So Team CDN are scoring. They have control of B and C. Yeah, now look still that highly contested B, and we should talk about it, Mark. Just how important holding B is. Yeah, it's just you know it really becomes the pivotal focal point of this game in so many ways. Easy to funnel players into the other strongholds, and this is a great example of it. You can see pressure being applied here by Tanner, a one v one for him around that B stronghold. But now you're going to jump over to a kid. Now one shot that player just didn't die, but doesn't matter because the teammates are there to help her out and to pick up those kills. And look at this, the teamwork, beautiful. Just moving around the map, putting these shots in. Teammates there to clean it up. Wonderful stuff coming in from Team Echidna. Yeah, great stuff. And that's what you expect to see from this roster, that Echidna roster, for those of you just joining us. Chilled you, King J, and Serial on that squad right now, up 2-0. to zero, And uh, they have been performing in this game. It's a nice kill for Jen also from tires into neons. Whenever you can pick up that angle and pick up anyone that's trying to skirt from cafe down to the bottom sea stairs, it's always nice to pick up those extra kills and give you opportunities like this to push. And Jen's also going to clean up another kill on dumpsters. Yeah, it's always a bad feeling, though, when you cross from, from Neon, you know, towards, from Cafe, excuse me, towards Neon, and you're kind of running past, and you just get clipped by that headshot, and you're like, oh, come on, man, my shots ain't hitting like that. That's because I miss more than I hit those kind of shots. And unfortunately, it, uh, sometimes it just doesn't feel quite good, as good as you want it to if you're on the receiving end. But damn, does it feel good if you're on the other side of it. Some shots coming in from King J, though. And now the score is 135 to 29, and with Rockets in their hands as well here of Team Akin, and it might get a little bit more ugly, but I'll tell you what, those pocket Rockets, and I'm going to say it, we're, uh, we're not the prettiest of things to look at.
Second one didn't come out. I've run into that. I'm sure a lot of people who have played a lot of Halo Infinite. There seems to be an, like a you can just hit it where you you it feels like you shoot the rocket and you maybe even get some audio that it, that it might come out, but maybe it just doesn't come out. It only came out on the client side. The just didn't come out a few frames away from actually coming out on the network side. So right there, I think one rocket's actually going to stay in the chamber. Like the fuse has been lit, but it just didn't quite exit the uh, yeah the barrel, so to speak. Well, here's uh, some shots going in around A. Chilled you, my goodness. There's nothing but ch nothing chill about that challenge. There's nothing chill about this one as well. Oh my god, took it on the world. Three players managed to take one down as well as another shield. So uh, a lot of damage being done by him. Absolutely, a lot of damage indeed. Let's take a look at some Bulldog action in the back for the side of Shazam. He's going to be back C now. Just thinking about what he might be able to do from here under this uh, trip cap opportunity for the other side and wondering when he should start to flip C, finally starts to flip C. Well, this triple cap is uh, very, very devastating. You can see that. There's no other way to put it. There's no other words you can use. But look at this. It's not just the trip cap that's being flipped here. They managed to flip C and A. So now it's just B. And uh, Team Echidna only holding on to two at the moment. And uh, they're all trapped at B. So if they do get pinched here, it could be a little bit bad news. And all of a sudden, things can get a little bit ugly as Shaz comes in and picks up that kill. King J gets taken down as well. Cyril does a good job to pick up one. But this is a, an opportunity here for Team CDN to get back into this. Yeah, let's see what they could do. And uh, like you said, things getting a little bit ugly on the scoreboard as well. They do have control of B, but this battle from Red Room is going to be a tough one. Help does come in from B stairs as well. So might be a little bit too little too late in terms of effort here. And I think we've seen some good. So, ooh, nice little stick from Echidna as well. She's going to scoot away down towards B stairs and just get her shields back as she's going to come wrap around the corner. Be ready to fight B stairs. Tanner Slay is on mouse and keyboard clearly as he turns around. Let me, t let me tell you, Mark and I cast a lot of controller infinite. You do not see anyone turn around like it. That's like something out of the grudge. Uh, that is a horror film moment. Oh, my word. Well, that's Tanner Slay show why MK could be effective, but uh, unfortunately not effective enough as Team Echidna will take home not only game number three here, but the series as well. So uh, congratulations to them. But yeah, that just made me. That's something, again, that we, <laughs> I wish I could do that. Do you know what I mean? I yeah. wish I had an extra acceleration button when I'm getting shot in the back. Just whip it round and uh, challenge that a little bit quicker than maybe I can on controller. But hey, they're the advantages of uh, different inputs, right? Taking a look at the other side of the bracket now, it's going to be Team Sony versus Team Centrea. We'll give you the rosters there as well. Sony, Cali, Coven, and Vegas versus Centrea, Hutch, RPR, and c -Nanner. So can I just say, a hold up, we have a moment here for any of the OGs in chat. We have a Twitch Rivals moment with c -Nanners and Hutch. Uh, the OGs themselves on the same damn team. And we haven't even talked about this on the show yet. So shout out to the absolute legends uh, on that team. The fact that we have Hutch and C-Nanners reunited from the old school machinima days. That's pretty incredible. I mean, it's one thing that we love, right? And Halo Infinite, we talked about it a lot on our HDS shows. The amount of people who come out of the woodwork, Andy, with the new game that's come out, it's captured a lot of the imagination of people from all different generations of Halo, right? The people who uh, might have stepped away for a game or two are coming back and uh, you get some strange messages. I think you got a strange one on Instagram from someone you hadn't spoken to for what felt like 10, 15 years. Like, yo, you want to play? I think everyone's had that moment here on Halo Infinite. Oh, it's pretty amazing. I mean, you are seeing so many names come back to this game. I think everyone's, a lot of people turning on their friends list. Like, first of all, so many players have moved right to, to, to PC and, and maybe haven't played on their Xbox friends list in a while. Everyone's firing their accounts back up. And like everyone is from, from 10 years ago is back online, which is absolutely incredible. But it's going to be a victory there coming in for the side of Team Sony. 250 to 40 in the end. 250 to 40, yeah, yeah, a dominating victory, and that is going to be the series as well for them. So uh, a three to zero victory is going to feel uh, also sweet to be to be uh, clear about it. To be clear about it, uh, things looking good for a few of our teams, and we've already got some teams who are kind of looking a little bit head and shoulders above the competition, Andy. Yeah, certainly, absolutely, uh, an opportunity there for not only a head and shoulder sponsorship, but like you said, maybe a go-ahead series for them as well. But let's go ahead and check back in with the boys. It's Team Legion versus Team Gigs. Yeah, Team Legion uh, playing from an underground bunker, which is, uh, you know, the, every game is dream. Being, uh, outside. I think it's actually outside. I'm pretty sure that's like, like a little outside area. It's got an, it's an, I think it's a, it's a military, it's a, it's a holiday-themed military outpost of some sort. Is that, is that the official? Is, is, I that, think, is that what's written it's on a plaque on the outside of it? Is it? I believe that is what it is. It's uh, pretty badass. 
Legion actually goes to uh, to the shops of the Black Hawk. So now you know. That's that's how he gets around. Uh, have you got any Legion stories, by the way? Because I've got a good. Oh God. Yeah, I've got some Legion stories. I don't know how many of them. I don't know how many of them are stream appropriate, but I've got plenty of Legion stories. Well, Legion. Uh, all I would say is he knows more words uh, to Evanescence's "Bring Me to Life" than I think more people should know. To be honest with you, the man. Uh, the man knows all of the all of the words, and uh, he can sing them in the right register as well. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, as we now see Legion here leaning forward. This man has represented a lot of legendary rosters uh, over the years. I think Brown Wall, uh, Purple Wall, a few other walls. Uh, yeah, Pink Wall. He's he's been, he's been part of all the uh, all the knockoff walls and really the OG of the Pink Wall, uh, Legion himself. But this man, let's let's not forget. This guy also knows how to play Halo, right? He's one of the most entertaining uh, personalities on Twitch, bar none. However, he can also he's played a lot of open bracket Halo. This guy knows his way around the game. Yes. Yeah, this uh, this man knows how to navigate between fold-up uh, chairs. Yeah. That is uh, something we can definitely uh, also, yeah definitely put uh, put next to his name as a little uh, something to put on his CV. But let's just take a second to look at the series score, Andy. Tied up at one to one here. So Team Legion, after uh, losing game number one, tie it back up after a win on a uh, bizarre Slayer. So now we move into a uh, oh, or is it maybe that's going to say wait in front of my eyes. That's wait a minute. Changed in front of my eyes. I think it's now two 0 to Team Gigs. I think you're right. I think we had a moment where we thought it was one to one, but it does look like it is instead going to be two to zero here in favor of Team Gigs, which I think is kind of what we were expecting coming into this uh, game number three. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's certainly uh, after the way that game one went, uh, you would expect that to be the score, and we are getting it confirmed in our ears. Thank you to production for uh, clearing that one up for us. That it is two to zero to Team Gigs here. So uh, this uh, it surprises me to be honest, because I, I do look at that Legion lineup, and when we were talking about lineups and some of the teams and some of the players, Andy, we kind of looked at that lineup. We were like, this is stacked. I think I said at the start of the show, I was like, this Legion team's looking pretty stacked. So to see them two to zero down is uh, a little bit of a surprise. But then you look at the other team they're playing, you're like, maybe not so much of a surprise. It's yeah, I think it shows the level of play we've got in the tournament. Absolutely, there's a lot of uh, a lot of talent here, and like we said, uh, you put it perfectly on set. Uh, there's actually too many names to list here. You know, right, right? It, we we couldn't really do a top X countdown for the players in this tournament because there's so many players to talk about, and just awesome creators from across different titles who have made a name for themselves across different games, uh, Warzone, Fortnite, many others, and a lot of Halo players as well. But uh, there, even that, there's there's so many names that you don't want to sleep on just because, uh, as Jen said, like, those are all Halo controller kids who are already like slapping, and I think we're seeing the same thing from Team Gigs as well. Yeah, I think, I, I, you know, we we got a pocket yeah, top five, Andy. I feel it'd be a little bit unfair to ask for a pocket top 32. Yeah, I feel like he might expire by the end of it. I know that if anyone could do it, pocket could, but I think uh, it'd be a bit of unfair of us to ask. But uh, yeah, I think he could definitely name every single player in these lobbies uh, inside of that so top 32, here, obviously, man. because there's 32 players. But, uh, you know, there's uh, well, another thing to, to remind everyone as well that, you know, all these players are streaming, Andy. Go and check out their streams. Go and check them out. Support them. Show them some love because that's what this is all about. It is. It really is. Just take take the time, especially as we're waiting for games to start. Just take the time, open up a few extra tabs. Just give these guys and gals a follow just because they work so hard to put out the content that they do day in, day out and always on the grind. And you got to really appreciate and respect what they're doing. So give them a quick follow. If you have your prime sub, throw one of them a prime sub, oh, maybe yeah. give a few, maybe give a few other subs uh, throughout the day really just to thank them for like putting that. on the Come shows on, that they do for their community. We're waiting for uh, Gigs to get back by the looks of things. He's currently uh, in the Observer slot. That's not what we need him. We need him on uh, Team Eagle. We need him to be alongside his teammates so we can get into this game number three. But oh, this is strong. when it does kick yeah, off, once again, we're going to see uh, Street Strongholds. I've got to say, I think Street Stronghold's, which mm -hmm. I'm going to be honest with you, the more I say it, the more difficult it does get to say. Um, yeah, yeah. The alliteration that does go on there. Oh, yeah. It's probably my favorite game type that I have in Halo Infinite. I, I like the fast-paced nature of it. I like the way that you can control different areas of the map. I, Mm -hmm. I like the way that you can kind of predict spawns a little bit as well if you're getting really, really nerdy about it. And uh, I, I don't know. I just like the pace of it. You're always in a fight, always in the action. Absolutely. You know, I'll, I'll say the same thing. I also like um, Street's Ball for the same reason um, because it ends up tending to be the same holds and then counter pushes. You know, it ends up being this like B, A, P, D hold that you have to push anyway. I kind of like in Ball that you could just push it and grab the hold instead of needing to take the time because I just hate being the one capping B. I think I have like TSD from like always being the one who's capping B and getting Six native. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Okay, cool. um, but these players are about to get in. We're going to see game number three. The question is, can Team Legion get a win on the board and 
force us to a game number four, or will Giggs three over? I mean, that is a pressing question. The other one that I have is that a ghillie suit that has been decorated like a Christmas tree, or is that last year's Christmas tree, which Legion is looking to reuse for this year? I mean, that's that's a pressing question for me. What's your take on that? What do you think? Now the background. Old now Christmas that you tree. mention it, a, 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 a year-old Christmas tree and a ghillie suit do look a, a lot alike, don't they? Exactly, right? Have yeah. you ever seen right, a year-old Christmas so tree and a ghillie suit in the same room? No, no, yeah. which would indicate that, that, that you're absolutely right. I think you're, uh, I think you're onto something. There's going to be a restart uh, there in that one, a false start for Team Legion and Team Gigs as we get into game uh, number three, but um, excited know. to see What's exactly who's really going to come out on top today. Like we said, lots of talent here. I want to thank everyone in Twitch so. chat for hanging out with us. You Let know, us know in chat I on set and I are keeping and an I and look an eye on chat. Also, shout out to Loki's here, but got to ask in chat. Let us know which team, which creator, which captain are you rooting for in this event? Let us know because we got we got quite a number of you in chat and we're curious of which captain you're pulling out for here. And of course, we've got Twitch drops going on as well, Andy. We've got some awesome stuff going on. So uh, you can uh, you can get the Got Milked nameplate, which is uh, which is pretty sick. We've got a lot of uh, customization available in Halo Infinite, which is uh, really, really cool. And what you're going to do is watch an hour, and you can claim the reward. Everything you need to know is in the chat right now. So uh, go and get it. I, do you know what? You're going to have to commentate for about 30 seconds, Andy, when we get into the game, because I've got to read that I've got to, okay. I want to get the nameplate. That's once again also HaloWaypoint.com. Uh, you go ahead and just connect to your Twitch account. It's pretty easy. Just log in with Twitch, authenticate, and you will be enabled, like we said, for the Twitch drops. I believe if you do want to see the visual, I believe Twitch Rivals has tweeted it out. You can go ahead to the Twitch Rivals Twitter if you want to see that exclusive Got Milked Halo Infinite nameplate and emblem. They're pretty sweet. I believe the motto is, if you know, you know. So if you know about getting milked and, uh, and, and milking, then you know exactly what we're talking about. But that's how you get the exclusive drop today. So here we go. Finally, it really looks like we might be into game. Doesn't Nick like Merckx. Full start. No, false start. Did, did you notice how uh, it's almost like Nick was listening to me there because I said, look, we're about to get into game, and then he just goes, doesn't look like it. Like, okay, Nick, I, I, I will listen to you. You're uh, you, you're, the, you're the boss here. You know when the also, game's done, and I'll just sit back for a second. You mentioned on set that you had a sweat of your forehead. It's probably because you don't have that M fam yeah. headband. No, you're right. Yeah. That uh, kind of street camo, which is just pretty badass. And now that I look at it, actually, I think i got to get myself one of those. I'm not sure it worked with me. I've got to be honest with you. You know, the lack of hair is a is an issue. That I, I, maybe I, maybe I'll pick one no, up. But yeah, it'll yeah. Certainly keep, it'll keep the forehead dry. You know, they get sweaty in here under these lights. You know, the more I think about it, Andy, I'm, you're onto something here. You're actually onto something. I've also just picked up a towel to wipe my forehead, so now you know. It's a better idea than you thought. Yeah, also, just shout out to our boy Nick Merckx, man, just doing bigger and bigger things year by year. Uh, a guy that, you know, so many of us grew up alongside in the OG Gears of War scene, Gears of War legend, who really always dominated across so many FPS titles and has, uh, and has just built an empire and such an awesome community uh so shout out to our boy nick and uh we'll see if they can pull off a win here maybe uh bounce back in this series back to legion having fun as always i, I will say this about legion right i love legion to bits i think he's a, he's a wonderful character a very very cool guy uh, always smiling and he always having fun always having a good time and uh i think if anyone wants to you know hasn't watched legion before you're gonna have a good time watching his stream i can guarantee that he's always having fun He's got a, a wonderful vocal range that I mentioned earlier as well. Country Drake, uh, another character which you might know, uh, played by Legion. Uh, again, never seen those two in the same room, so we don't know if it is the same person. But uh, true, you're gonna have a good time hanging out with Legion. You know, if it's an event, if it's in the stream, wherever it is, the man is uh, all laughs. Absolutely, and uh, also just a huge fan personally of Legion's Ariana Grande impressions, which are, by the way, <laughs> spot on. They're absolutely incredible. If you haven't seen Legion's Ariana Grande impressions, make sure you scroll that Honestly, Twitter because it is, or just Google it or sure. find it somehow because it's worth the time. Let me tell you. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I won't, I won't spoil it for people because you go and enjoy it yourself. But Ariana Grande must have a, a long laundry bill. <laughs> the way that she apparently eats food. So uh, hopefully we get into the game now. I There's a few little things that a few little uh, things that you have so to uh, just make sure are just uh, on point, working, fixed up before we get into this game. But you know what? The delay just makes things more interesting. It builds the anticipation here, Andy, for this game number three. 
Astro it really does. I think uh, more and more the longer we wait, uh, the more excited we are to see strongholds on streets between these two. But you got to think with as punishing as this game type is on set, Team Gigs with the 2-0 lead, they really might have the upper hand here. And uh, this is going to be our last game of this first group. We'll have to see which team's going to close it out. Well, fingers crossed, everybody. It looks good. Everyone looks like they're on the right team. Everyone looks like they're ready to go. You can already see the grinders in the lobby, by the way, by the armor customization. You know, we've got some of the, uh, the beautiful stuff coming in here. Mine's uh, keeping it simple, Actually, which is uh, something that I, I respect as well. Got a little bit of a campaign uh, armor in there as well, so everyone's been playing through different parts of Halo Infinite, but it looks like we're ready to go. And Giggs is going to be the POV that we watch to start things off. Just fighting all these players that kind of face up at the start of this game from A to C. It's a little bit of a showdown in the middle of the map. Yeah, it is. A little peek there from Rockets uh, tries to come out, but Giggs is ready for it. Front A just continues to watch front C. Legion will go down as well. It's a nice little push there from Game Shaker with the Bulldog. That's going to give them Rockets straight into tires. Yeah, they do uh, not have control for a few seconds, but they do have those power weapons. And I tell you what, thread in the needle. That's some beautiful stuff. However, Nick Mokes and uh, Karma will combine to take down mine so he had an opportunity there maybe to pick up a more than just the one kill a double or a triple would have been really really big for him but uh teamwork like i mentioned from Karma and Nick Merckx was good enough to just avoid those shots. And now they'll be able to pick up the cap as well. And look at that. Nice stuff from Nick. Just rotating B. Get some angle from Tires on bottom middle. Also challenging A. So maybe we're finally seeing these guys catch a little bit of flow. You might have caught Nick Merckx's tweet today saying the surprise announcement here. We got a surprise tourney coming up. And I mean, knowing how much Nick loves this franchise, how much Halo he's played, you know, he's still to play today. So we'll have to see what they can do in game number three. Well, AB is con in control of team Gig, so they will be scoring. But it's pretty close at the moment. Gig's picking up one kill onto Karma, though. Might slow things down for just a few seconds. Speaking of Legion, let's see what Legion's doing. He's uh, been sat in the lobby. He's been waiting to go. Let's see if he's uh, going to be able to roll that energy into a ball and pick up some kills. There's one onto Gigs. Does he have the uh, the nade quite in the right place to pick up the second? No, but the teammate does. That's going to be AB in their control now. And maybe a little bit of a comeback on the boards here. 36 to 6. I was going to say, hold the phone. Legion, Karma, Nick Merckx, and Slasher Al just really putting up a show here on the opening of this game, and they're looking pretty strong. Legion going to back down smartly as well, just have that thrust piece of equipment so that you can just uh, skedaddle, skedoodle around the map a little bit quicker and escape some of these shots that are coming in. He's going to be jumping back up to tyres here, such a vital place to hold onto streets. Nick Merckx going to be taking down Giggs, he's going to take down Legion as well. Mines will also pick up a kill, so Team Giggs didn't have control, but they do for now. BNC in their control, and they also have the kills alongside. Yeah, right now, starting to put some points on the board. A very good start there from Team Legion. They just need to keep that up, but the Stalker Rifle damage coming in from the side of Mines, too strong as they're going to start to score and legion not able to get the rocket off either so that's going to be two rockets in the hand of mines as well first one's going to do damage might catch nick here as well Ooh, get some help and they, now they are starting to turn this game around yeah we just see the difference between uh having the ability to spin on mouse and keyboard <laughs> controller yeah getting shot in the back tanner a little bit earlier just whip around like it was nothing and now we're going to see uh the opportunity to pick up some free kills. There's that thrust again, but Mines managed to get that rocket just in the vicinity. To take that player down. AC in control of Team Geeks now. And uh, they're going to take the lead as well by the looks of things. So this is a close game here, Andy. It really is tight between the two. Yeah, it really is. This is a much tighter game of three than we've seen through the rest of the series. It's good to see from the side of Team Legion. And like we said, some FPS veterans on that side as well. So not surprising to see them put up a good fight in game number three. Mines in a 1v1. Mines wins the 1v1 as Karma will be put to sleep for just a few seconds. Legion will move in to do some damage himself. Nice shots onto the player up on the balcony as well. And now trying to commit to capturing B. The Bulldog's down in front of him. He doesn't want to put that thing on the lead for now. Let's that one just uh, sit there. But you want to pick that thing up, Legion. It does so much damage, especially inside of that beat stronghold. Wow, good shots from Legion here. Not able to finish it just yet, but should have help on two players coming B Street. They do pick up one. Should have help on the second as well. I'd be surprised if he has to fight this alone. Yeah, another assist. Nice work here as they pick up two. Take down Gigs and Gamesaker in that play. Yeah, just as importantly, though, all these kills going down around B. His teammates were able to convert A. So now we're going to be tied up, and now we're going to see Team Legion going into the lead. So things looking very, very interesting here. Rocket's about to drop as well. Rocket's about to pop. Who can pick him up, though, and hit the shots is the real question. They picked up two more kills as well. I'm surprised we didn't see a combat evolve there. He did have the plasma, could have pulled it off. Rocket's will looks like trade in cuts, so now they have to worry about PD and back A spawns. They're making sure to have the head on a swivel, and uh, this has been a great game from Team Legion here in game number three. 
So, uh -huh, so far, but we know how quickly things can change, especially with the fast-paced nature of streets. A couple of kills don't go your way, and all of a sudden you find yourself out of control and trapped in one of those spawn points and one of those group spawns. So this is starting to get intense. You can hear it in the comms. 112 to 60 or uh, 69 points, it looks like. And growing as well. The battle for A going down here. This is a really big moment, and it looks like the kills are going to go to Team Legion as uh, Slash is going to move in to pick some up. Nice shot in the play on the ramp as well. His teammates are here, but can they trade out these kills? Yeah, they did a really great job picking up all those kills. As you're going to see, that's another moment with two dead. They should be able to hold here, continue holding. Really great job to make sure they're aware of those cafe spawns, and they continue to really push all the way over to eliminate the players, clear them out of cafe, and they're going to now be likely down in B. They've already made it all the way to B, though. They are converted. Here, maybe a double, maybe a double here coming in for gigs. He'll already pick up two, and they have converted B now with a B and C hole. Team two on B. Here comes the help from the teammates as well, but he gets flanked. Can quite stay alive uh, for long enough there to milk to allow his teammate to get those shots in to maybe give him a chance of winning that battle, but. Now, well, Games Eager is going to be taking some shots himself. So, Team Gigs trying to make that assault onto B once more. Going to go in. Again, get the reset, does that as well, but the A has been flipped. So even though they're scoring for a few moments, they need to get control of that A stronghold. And it looks like Fox is in a place to do that. Nice shots coming in here. Big kills in this game. And that's going to turn control and scoring, most importantly, back in their favor. Yeah, game saver with some great shots, which you expect to see uh, from a player with his Halo pedigree and uh, picks up some nice kills around B. Is going to have to try to win that battle against a player that was flying in. Looks like based on the obs cam, he will pick up that kill with the Bulldog as well. Woof, woof, goes the Bulldog, and it barks again, it takes down Nick Merck. So this is what I was mentioning earlier, when we saw Legion just leaving that Bulldog down in front of it. Maybe didn't quite recognize it was there, might not have got the comms, but it's so deadly inside of those right corners, and especially with the ability to shoulder peek in this game, Andy, you can kind of shuffle and shake and do your best uh, boy band impression if you need to, to get those extra shots in with the fast strafe speed. Yeah, let's not forget, though, somehow Team Gig's still not leading in this game, as we still see... A decent lead for the other side, 144 to 118. So, got to be proud of what Team Legion, once again, that's Karma, Nick Merckx, and Slasher, what they've been able to do in this game. AR go brr. Beat down go bang. Oxy picks up another one here. Gigs will pick up yet another, 144 to 128, but the 128 is rising to 132 now, and there's a triple cap. So for Team Gigs, this is the perfect situation. Now if they can find where those spawns are coming in, they might be able to really rack up some points, and Foxy is on the hunt, gets two. Oh boy. And there's going to be a little uh, inspection of the armor, Andy. Yep, a nice little casual standard routine inspection of that armor. Everything looks good, so they'll move on. Nick with an unlucky cap baseball and tries to fly out of it, and the shots will be easy coming in for Foxy. I'm going for B right now. I'm going for B right now. Are you? A has been converted. B is working its way towards the control of Team Legion as well. So even though these kills are going in the favor of certain players and certain teams, it is not control that is being backed up by it. So you have to give a lot of credit here to Team Legion for the way that they've actually fought out of that triple cap. Not an easy thing to do. No, they got C. They even had momentary B control as well. Now, that will get flipped much uh, in part due to Mines is picking up a double kill there. Also, be nice angles from Game Sager from B Pillars into C Plat as well. Could have be happy with that kill. You heard him just say that they were making sure no B spawns. And actually, they might have forced like Red Room B spawns there, which was really interesting and honestly pretty rare, but they're going to continue scoring here. Grab them, dead, dead. Dead, he's dead. He's on C. I'm actually going to work with the teammate here to take down Mines on those rockets. It's a really important 1v1 battle. He's going to win it with a little bit of help stop coming in as well. It looked like another player going to be up on the balcony on the B Street. He's going to uh, jump down and say hello to that dead body once more. Karma's going to clean up one. Karma has 19 kills in this lobby, by the way. So uh, Big Daddy Karma living up to the game attack with some Big Daddy kills in this game. But Foxy's going to pick up one mines as well. And Team Legion, even though they've been pretty good in this game, pretty strong. And just a reminder, they need to win this game to keep the series going. All of a sudden, they're starting to fall behind. The kill's just not going in their favor. And it's so difficult to wrestle away a stronghold if you don't have the numbers on the board. It really is. Drop shield does go down there for Slash. They're going to pick up a few assists. Now they're going to work on the B push. But you have to think, a team like Team Gigs, really dangerous there. You hear Nick Merckx just saying, just getting nated so much. You hear him off screen. But Team Gigs is a team that you got to be careful against, especially in a game type like Strongholds, because it is a marathon. It is not a sprint. You need to be ready to play the whole game. And right now, it's 13 to 160. 164 and climbing though, they do have control of A and B here, Team Legion, but two players taking down a no shields, they're going to have to survive here, and Legion with the Bulldog is going to be able to do so, Nick Merck's now trying to convert C, so they're working on flipping the map, and they now have a triple cap, so... 
Yeah, Beatdown yeah, comes in from Mines team. as he manages to scoop behind that. Nick Merckx unaware. Catch him a little bit by surprise. The shot's going to come in across the map here as well. Legion's trying to fight this one, but not having too much of a good time about it as we jump back over to the captain of Team Legion. Legion just trying to survive for now. Yeah, Legion now. You hear him calling out the rocket time. Those are a player on Neons. This is a dangerous place to challenge from, but the help does come. So he's going to stay alive and maybe even get back at his tires for the rockets. No, he will get taken down. Always a dangerous place to fight from because you just saw he got naded so easily from front seat. Look at the yeah, score now, because it's starting to get extremely close. BC in control, scoring yeah, in control of Team Gigs. And now they're just six seconds away, or six points or so, from taking this game home. C is being contested. You can see it in the bottom right of your screen. If they can convert this one, then they will stop scoring for now. But with the position that Gainsager finds himself in right now, He's going to turn that one back Mark over in. to A, but it doesn't matter because B's now been taken by Team Legion. Absolutely now. Game are going to be swinging in. See what we can do with the Bulldog. Looks like the Rockets might have been out. He does get a quick check there to see if that is the case. Looks like no grab. Nice little shot and a quick two shot as well towards the back of the A courtyard. 247 on the board. 247 and rising. That's going to be game. That is going to be set. That's going to be match. Going to Team Gigs. They win 3 to 0, but an extremely competitive game of street strongholds there, Andy. But Team Gigs, I mean, those gentlemen are looking extremely strong. They are, and they're not really our, our, you know, not only the one of the teams that's looking so strong, uh, Puckett, as we bring you back in, but also a few teams showing a little bit of signs of life towards the end of their series. Even though we saw a, two, a few 3-0s, those game threes got pretty close. So we're going to have a lot of good games here to come still today at Twitch Rivals. And I feel like our players are just still finding their form working out yeah. together here. We have, like, world champions there from Team Legion with Slasher and Karma. No, it's not Ben Jackson, not that Karma that ran the right. hill to free-for-all world. This is the Karma from the Call of Duty scene one of the best controller players of all time. But the mouse and keyboard players, a lot of people are making excuses about auto aim in the chat. Doesn't seem like our mouse and keyboard players having too tough a time here on set. I, I like the way that you've lit that fire under a Twitch chat as well. I love that from you, Bucky. It was just any opportunity to get them going. You're going to take it. I respect it. But yeah, I mean, uh, Team Gigs, I genuinely did not expect them to win that series, especially in the way that they did. It was it was pretty dominant. It really right. was against like some really, really talented controller players, like you said, who also have been grinding the game. It's not like they've just jumped onto Halo Infinite. They've been playing, you know, hours and hours a day. So uh, a very impressive performance from them. Bravo, I want to give a special shout out to King J from Team Echidna. He drops the first overkill of the tournament so far. Any other players that caught your eyes in the first opening hour of action? Yeah, I'd say probably Mines, right, on Team Gigs. I think we talked a lot about Gigs and Gamesager, but let's not forget about Foxy and Mines. Uh, they are putting up numbers. I saw a lot of people in Twitch chat as well giving them shout outs. So uh, not only do we need to talk about Gigs on that team and Gamesager, but also Mines and Foxy both stepping up on that squad as well.